Hello, folks. Welcome back to About the House. This is your audio university of knowledge on everything about your home. From construction to maintenance to remodeling to real estate and even investing. And through the blessing of the answer, we have a forever library that you can always go back and check our podcast out. Because every week we have a specific uh, trade or we have a specific market or something we're trying to talk about about the home. And that way you can go back to our forever library uh, through the podcast, through the answer, and find out and re- listen to it again. A lot of times when we give actually give out a refer- Referrals, because we have a, a list of contractor referrals we, uh, that we also have, then you can always go back and listen to the individuals that have been on there uh, in the past. So this is a fabulous show. I want you everybody to get a pen and paper and get ready to ask any questions that you may have. Hey, this is Troy Galloway. I am your humble host. I'm the owner of Galloway Building Services. Just like this show, we're a one of a kind. There isn't another company in the Midwest that provides the services we do for folks throughout the Midwest section of the country here. We help people with construction consulting. If you have any questions about if your job is being done right or correctly, you give us a call. We do new construction inspections, remodeling inspections, commercial and residential inspections. So if you're buying a building, whether it's a business building or your own personal home, give us a call. We're here to help you with that. We also work with professional litigation. So if you have any kind of issues, we kind of try to come in and help out. Uh, and because of our contacts, like our awesome guests that we had just recently, Matt Nagel of the Bi State Law Firm, uh, we can help you and get through whatever kind of problems that you may have with that, too. We have been in the construction business for over 42 years, and I've been helping the people in the St. Louis and Illinois, Missouri region for over 32 years. Uh, our motto is, is that we're here to make sure that the job is being done right, you're not getting ripped off, and you're getting what you paid for. So give us a call if you ever have these situations come up, and the phone number is 636 394 Three one one two, and my personal cell phone is three one four five two zero. Six six five five. Before we move on up here today, I want to thank one of our premier sponsors, J and H Properties, real estate broker agents. They're large enough to handle all your home buying and selling needs, and yet still small enough to be sensitive. Sensitive to be there for when you get these emotional questions and concerns, you have any problems, you don't get passed off to another name and to this firm. Whoever you're working with from the beginning, you'll be working with to the end, always there for you. And, you know, it, it does get pretty stressful out there when you go through there. So it's great to have somebody that's in your corner. So give them a call, 314 314- Six zero two four eight three five. All right, so we have a great show today here today. I'm not only your humble host, but today I am your humble guest. And this is going to be a great show because I get asked about this all the time uh, to put this show forth. This is actually a class that I teach in the college, uh, at, uh, and it is it's a construction class and how to be your own general contractor. And with that being said, we also I have a a, a good friend of mine who is he kind of like the program observer, and I'm hoping that if he has any questions, he jumps in. George Slaughter, and uh, he's going to talk more about his the Veterans Chamber of Commerce and uh, how we can also help veterans in the construction business. So we'll have him come on at the end. And if you, George, you have any questions, buddy, you just jump right on there, and we'd love to have him. Well, I'm really glad to be here, Troy. Thanks for having me. Um, looking forward to talking later about the Veterans Chamber and all the great things we're doing over there. As you know, uh, there's quite a few contractors uh, and uh, subcontractors that are veterans. So I'm hoping that we can reach out to some of those today. And like I said, this is a show that, or this is a class that I've been doing at the college. So we're not going to get everything put into this in this short segment. That's why it's really important that you get your pen and paper and ask. Now, so how to be your own general contractor. When you get done with this today, just this short segment, you're probably going to know more about how to what you're looking for in a general contractor 
what to expect out of your general contractor than most of the guys and girls out there today. You know, everybody's jumping in. If they got a pickup truck, they call themselves a contractor. So this is why it's really important, and this is why my class always sells out. We're going to give more information about the time and dates of the classes a little bit later. But uh, right now, we're just going to jump right in here. And like I said, uh, please, please make any notes that you have. So we're going to begin right here. Uh, Applying for preline permits, well, that is always one of the premier things that we must do to get started on any kind of general contracting. But that's where some folks kind of get jumped the gun and they don't realize that's really not where we want to start. What we really need to do is that we need to find out exactly what the scope of the project's going to be. And say if you're doing a room addition or a kitchen or anything, you want to make sure that whatever drawings that you have, mechanical drawings, uh, any kind of uh, uh, construction drawings, you want to make sure you have all them put together. And you're also going to want to have put together some sort of budget. Uh, I, and, and that's really important, the budget, because this is the, well, we all heard how many times over and over again, you know, uh, this job cost me 10 times more than I ever expected. That's because when you hear somebody say that, just look at them and know they did not listen to this program. They did not have their plan in action. So I'm going to make sure you get your drawings put together. Then when you get your drawings put together, then you start putting it up for bid. Now, you kind of already got an idea of what it is that you're going to do, you know, and the scope of the project. So now we do that. We get our guys together, our gals together, and, and start getting our bids. Uh, Matt Nagel last week uh, was on here, and he talked about, or actually uh, a couple of weeks ago, I guess, and he actually talks about that, what some of the contracts and things like that you need to do. So I'm not going to dwell into that on this segment here or this show today, uh, but go back to the podcast and listen because he's got some great information so as you can get caught with that. Um, but now some of the things that I do want to go back, and I know he ta- we talked about it before, but when, I, when you get your contracts in, we want to make sure that some we finally start narrowing it down. And one of the things is the hardest is how to find good sub or contractors or subcontractors. You know, if you're the general, what that means is you're in charge of all these folks out there, and you're the you're kind of like the guy standing up there in front of the Philharmonica. You're the one up there directing the music. You're directing the show. You're putting it all together, getting the people in at the right place at the right time, so they're not stepping on each other. And so, it's very important that you have this all squared away with that. And one of the things that I want you to do is not just know what the scope of the project is, but also what do you expect at the end? Well, how do you know what to expect at the end? Think about how you're going to use it. So if it's a kitchen, is it going to be something you're going to be using a lot of company or is it just going to be personal? If it's a room addition or a basement finish, is it going to is that, just think about it. How are we going to do it? Is it going to be for recreation or is it going to be maybe it's going to be for, uh, you know, just relaxation and private time getaway, man cave kind of stuff, you know? So we want to make sure that you have that very end project that like that. That would be part of it. All right. So now. We got our guys, and we're all getting lined up. We got our bids. Well, we got our. We've asked out to our friends. Also, actually, come to our Gallo, our web page uh, on Galloway Building Services. We are put together a list of preferred contractors, guys and girls that I have worked with for years. That's a, I would say probably the best source of referrals. Why? Well. I have a reputation for being picky. Yeah, and again, everybody work with me. If they're here, they know that they're on that list. They know that I'll probably be looking at the job. So make sure that, you know, that's a good way. But if not, you also can always go to your friends that's had the projects done. Or, you know, you know I hate to throw a pitch in there for Home Advisor, but Angie's, Angie's List, something like that, that's a good one to go to. Now, when we got that, we're all ready. Except one more thing. I want to make sure that you have 
their certificate of insurance hold you are the certificate insurance holder now after my show next week we're having an insurance guy come in so we're going to put all this together for you and he'll describe more about it but you want to make sure you're the holder of their insurance because when anybody in this world today in this technology anybody could put together a uh, a a fake insurance policy but if you're a certificate holder, what that means is if, for one, the insurance company sends it to you directly with your name on it. If anything happens to their insurance, say they bail or they don't pay their bill or whatnot, they're no longer covered, they will contact you and let you know. So that's very important to make sure. I would say that's one of the most important things. Well, folks, we are wrapping up on this segment, and we're going to talk about uh, you know the next segment of how to put all this project together. Make sure that you go to our, you get a pen and paper, write your stuff down, your questions down. Go to our webpage, Galloway Building Services. Go to our Facebook page and ask us these questions. And if I don't exactly hit them in this show, we will reach back out. I get folks all the time call me and say, hey, Troy, what about this? What about that? What do you think about this? That's what you call us for. Well, folks, thank you. And I am looking forward to the next segment. And we will see you on the flip side. Welcome back, folks, to About the House. I am really tickled y'all came back here and joined us today. And one second, if you would, please. There. (laughs) Our official job dog, Willow Galloway, has just wrapped herself up in the cord. (laughs) All right. Everybody's got to have an official job dog. I am so tickled y'all came back and we're enjoying the show with us here. So I want to back up just a little bit. And uh, I have my good buddy here, George Slaughter, as we talked about. And, and he's, uh, he's mentioned, talked to you a little bit. And we're going to talk to him more about how you can work with the Veterans Chamber of Commerce. But let's work on this for a second here. And that is the bid process so we've already kind of said we want to pick out what we're looking for in our contractors what what do you want in your bid itself and this is very important that you get some of these things squared away and put into here uh, in your contract so there is no questions what we really want these jobs to do is flow simply smoothly without any confrontation and everything's ironed out so one of the things we like to see absolutely is schedule of the work progression what that basically is is they're saying if the world is perfectly round which is not how and when are we going to have these people in and then people out reason you need to know that is that if you ever have a job well george you know yourself you've been uh, done house flipping and things like this in the past so uh you know you you want to know when the uh, the plumber's going to be needing to come in so you can get him a warning you know oh yeah Yeah. everything has to go in order yeah that's right (laughs) you don't want you don't want to put up the drywall and then have a plumber come in there and kick it back out (laughs) yeah and you know honestly that happens more often than not you know no that's that's a uh, 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 not only is it costly it's embarrassing you know uh so you're going to also need all your all your contractors too subcontractors you're going to want to know how much lead time are they going to need to know when they're going to come in okay what do i mean by that so if i got a plumber does he need to know a week ahead of time two weeks ahead of time three weeks ahead of time that's why the progression work schedule is so important so as that you call them you get it scheduled now make a note Make sure when you do call them or you email them, email and I like best because it gives you a written a documentation of when and t- that you talk to them and any correspondence back. And I'd also recommend they say two weeks. Okay, call them two weeks. Call them again in a week. Then call them in again in a couple of days. You know, everybody's really crazy busy out there right now, so we want to make sure you give them plenty of time. One of the other things I want to make sure it's on in your bid is trash cleanup. Listen, we're not these guys' mama. You know, it's not our job to be over there holding their hand. And if we are holding their hand, we want to have a discount on the cost. Don't charge me full price, and then I have to clean up after you. You know, I understand maybe work-related debris is one thing. But I'm not there to pick up your soda cans. I'm not there to pick up your lunch boxes or your lunch like that. That, that. You make sure you get that. Now, if you're the kind of person you don't mind, 
or if they're going to give you a good discount, that's awesome. Another one, bathroom concerns. Now, if it's an outside job, maybe you could work something out with an on-the-site toilet or something like that. But if they're inside the house, what we want to make sure is what bathroom are they going to use? And because you don't want them wandering through your house, say if they're in the kitchen, they might just have them only do the hall bathroom. You don't want them to wander. Say, I got to go to the bathroom. You find them in your master bathroom, you you know, and uh, not that they necessarily would, but maybe it's busy. They got to, you know, no, you just keep them in a designated area. Uh, And the guys don't mind. And also cleanliness in the bathroom. Okay. You know. If it's outside, okay. If it's an outhouse outside, that's one thing. Inside my home, you know, they're, you're their guest. We want to make sure uh, that they ha- you, all expectations are taken care of. Next one, parking. Where are they going to park? Now, that sounds kind of crazy, but it isn't. You know, we got school coming up. School buses coming through. We can't, can't get in the way of the children. Can't get in the way of the mailboxes. Things like that. You know, make sure that you have a designated area where they can do their you know park and take care. You know, come and go. So it's not you're not bothering the neighbors. You're not bothering the mailman. Anything like that. Work hours. Now, most municipalities have designated times that you can and can't work. But sometimes, say, if you got a Christmas party or you got a, a birthday party or something coming up, uh, then you want to make sure that you tell them that, that there you don't want them there then. They won't know if you don't. So, it, it, so you want to make sure, or if you have specific religious beliefs that you don't allow people in and out of your home at certain times, let them know. That's what you guys usually did, didn't you, George, when you worked with your people? Oh, yeah. We always had designated hours to make sure that people um, would not overlap or people wouldn't run into uh, the, the homeowners or anybody else. You know, as they're coming in and out of work, things like that, because it can get a little confusing. Right. Well, and if you get it in writing, then, you know, years ago, I took a, 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 a I actually got certified as being a construction superintendent years ago. And I was always told people don't want to think they just want to do. And you just lay it out for them, and they're a lot happier if they don't have to worry about, hey, am I doing it right or not? You know, and we just want to. We, we, we want to end the job, getting it done. <laughs> no overlays. All right, so we move on to the next part. What do you want in your bid? Well, uh, so what part of the building uh, contractors are not allowed into? You know, you don't want them like we talked about the master bathroom. But what if you have children? What if you have, well, you have pets? Okay, oh, this is a good one. George, you're going to love this one. So I did an inspection for one of our friends here a while back. And as we was going through there, they said, don't spe- spend too much time or only one or two people only in this part of the, cl- uh, of the basement. I got down there. They had an alligator. I, I, didn't kid, I kid you not. They had a pet. I, I don't know how in the world you have a pet alligator, but a pet alligator. That thing was about four foot long. Well, anyway, that was a good so – right there. They might just tell your contractors that anyway. Keep them out of that section. <laughs> That's job over for me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, actually, that wasn't a very good selling point for them <laughs> folks either. But, I mean, that's uh, some of the things you want to make sure, you know. You want to make sure people can and can't go in your home. Music. You know, some music's offending to some people and others, they really like it. I personally am one of them old uh, country music guys. I know George is snickering at me right now. <laughs> I love the old tears in the beer. But uh, honestly, a lot of folks find that offensive. They don't like that, you know. So just talk about, you know, the, don't, can't say, you cannot tell somebody what they can't listen to. But you can mention to them how loud to have the music. If they're outside working, maybe the neighbors don't want to hear, you know, Hank Williams Jr. or something. Out to, I don't know why, but maybe they would, you know. So you want to make sure about talk about that. Dress codes. Well, dress codes are really important. Now, unions have had dress codes for years. But our, our, our contractors or subcontractors, they don't. And, well, we've all seen the plumbers thing, you know. We won't go into that, but we've seen plenty of jokes about that. But, you know, if you have children and things, maybe you don't want your guys running around without shirts on. I know on my construction sites, we never let the guys go without the shirts uh, because 
safety for my particular reason. You know, I knew that if they had some clothing on, that that might help them from being burned or hurt or whatnot. So that's something you want to make sure. Also, we move right on down the line here. Where are you going to store your materials? That sounds kind of crazy, but you don't want your electrical equipment in with your plumbing equipment, in with your carpenter equipment. Have everybody have a designated area for where they put their materials. Also, if it's you're the contractor, they're in your home, maybe you don't want all this stuff in the front driveway where it might not look so pretty. Maybe you want it in the back of the house. Which So these are things to think about, you know, when you're doing that. Uh, I want to make sure that that because materials, well, for one, we don't want them to walk either. So real quick, like we're going to move on down here because we're running out of time in this segment. Boy, time just flies here. Uh, communications. How's the best way to communicate with our contractors, our subcontractors? Do you want to do it by phone? Do you want how often do you want to talk? Do you want to do it uh, by email? What's their best system? It's because you want to make sure you have open lines of communication at all times. That's so important that we do that because, well, if people get all upset if they, they lose the communication. They start freaking out, you know, wondering if things are being done and what's going on. People don't want to be in the dark. Well, anyway, hey, this is wrapping up this segment. I am going to finish this up. I see you on the other side, and we will kind of move right on to the next segment. And I thank you, George, for sitting in here helping us out. And we will see you on the other side. I'm learning a lot. Sponsored by Troy Galloway and Galloway Building Services, your top choice for professional home inspections in the St. Louis area. GallowayBuildingServices.com. Troy Galloway is a construction manager and consultant, commercial and residential builder, and a certified inspector for all commercial and residential buildings. And now, here is About the House with Troy Galloway. Welcome, folks, to About the House. This is your humble host, Troy Galloway, owner of Galloway Building Services. And I am here with my good friend, George Slaughter. How you and doing? We are talking about how to be a general contractor. So we are moving right on here. What some of the things to do and what not to do, how to make sure everything's being taken care of. So let's move right back up in here. And, uh, George, you have any questions or any thoughts? Because I know you've been involved in the industry yourself for years. So just jump right in here and, and, and uh, give me your two cents worth. You know, I, I really I, – I used to have a thing about general contractors. I, I was always wondering how they managed all of these different things, especially with multiple projects going on. So when you tell me how how that works when you when you've got four, three, four projects going on and you've got multiple contractors in different places and multiple people doing maybe even multiple people doing the same thing, maybe two or three plumbers all working at different times and all these different projects in different parts of town, and you're kind of the like you said, you're orchestrating the whole thing. So how do you manage the time and how do you manage the the the, the people who are managing the people, I guess? Oh, that's a great question. And so we'll start kind of, there's several questions there. So we'll start, how do I manage the people? Because I think that are the managers. I don't manage, so you don't manage your subcontractors, the workers. That's part of the communication. You want to only work with their, the managers or the subcontractor owners, however however they want you to do it with. So what I do is if I'm on a big construction project site, then I just have a weekly meetings with the subs, uh, their contractors. But if I'm doing work all over town, then what I do is we just have communication where I call them, we talk to each other, you know, maybe I catch each other. You know, that's what I'm talking about. We need to have times that we can visit back and forth. How do I manage the people's well? Actually, or the projects itself. So honestly, if I've already followed all of the procedures we've already done or talked about to this point, I am really not managing that. You know, what I'm doing is I'm finding out how we come and got, you know, say Tom is on, he's running my HVAC and uh, say, Tom, how are we coming on these projects here? You know, or you, you talk to their foreman or we go on time, you know, and just stay in communication. 
uh, now we have so many different avenues that it really helps, and that is I love to text message uh, because that gives us an opportunity. Also, when I do that, uh, in, uh, and I, if I'm working for a, contra- uh, a customer, I like to have them involved in the text messaging themselves. So they see the dialogue going back and forth. And, you know, if something happens and you just, you know, you take care of it that way. It's, it's You know, folks, it's, it's easier just to admit that you made a mistake than let the people stay in the dark and not know, you know. Sure. So I think that's really important. Thank well, you. Uh, so we, uh, let's talk about payment schedule because I think that that's something a lot of – this is one of the pet peeves, and I'm going to finish up this segment just on this here. Payment schedule. And if I have to, we'll drag it over to the next one. Folks, if your contractor comes to you and he tells me i got to have one half down or one third down, don't hire him. Unless it's a little tiny job, don't. Because it's, you're not there to finance the contractor. If he's a good contractor, he's already got good credit elsewhere. Uh, and he can take care of that until it's time to get the job done. I always recommend 10% or less down. Now, Matt Nagel, a bi-state law firm, the attorney we had on here a couple of weeks ago, he talks about some of the legal parts of the contract with money down. But I always recommend that you put down no more than 10%. Now, if it's a material heavy, then you might say, okay, you know, have a little bit more when they first show up to help pay for some of that material. But you, if you pay too much and you get, you don't want them to be robbing Peter to pay Paul. And that's what happens when we really get busy. Because a lot of the contractors out there, they're very good at what the projects are doing. They're very good about installing the kitchens and such. But that's, does it, that's not what makes a good businessman. Good, that's a different animal altogether. So they kind of get a little mixed up with that. And then I like to see it get paid on progression. So we'll say, for instance, we're doing a room addition. Uh, so I, I give them a little bit down payment. They show up on the job. They get to, you know, I help on the material cost. And then when they get X amount framed, they get X amount of money. It's all designated, all written out. All already agreed to. Then when they get done with this permit, they get done with that trade, they get done with this. And that way you be able to actually, they know when they're going to get paid. They know that if, you, and you know that you're not getting behind much. Sometimes it's going to be a little give and take. Sometimes you're going to be a little behind the su- your, con- your subs. Sometimes you're going to be a little ahead of them. And that's going to ebb and flow. That's fine. Uh, but that's why we don't – what did we just see on the news just the other day where this poor lady up uh, in, in the city and, and the, the guy took you know, over 50 percent never showed up. Deals gone bad. Facebook page has these people on there all the time, you know, where these guys have uh, ripped them off and taken their money. So that's very, very important. Oh, I see I'm talking too much. We're wrapping this segment up. <laughs> Oh, thank you folks for listening to About the House. We will see you on the flip side. Troy Galloway is a construction manager and consultant, commercial and residential builder, and a certified inspector for all commercial and residential buildings. And now, here is About the House with Troy Galloway. Welcome back, folks, to About the House. This is your humble host, Troy Galloway, owner of Galloway Building Services. We are your certified construction consulting and inspection company. You buy and sell in a home? Give us a call. You got a construction project? You want to make sure it's being done right? Give us a call. We're here to make sure your job's being done right and you're not getting ripped off and you're getting what you paid for. And that's pretty much what this show is about today is how to be a general contractor. Even if you're not going to be the general contractor, what you should be looking for in your general contractor. Uh, and it, if we do, you follow the, uh, you follow these different ways of doing things that we're talking about. These uh, systems that we're putting in place, it's going to make everybody's job go a lot smoother. Hey, before I go any further, I got to jump in here because I got to put a plug in for my good buddy Jacob Abraham, Classic Flooring Solutions. 
Jacob, I have known Jacob for all well heck for thirty years now. Uh, they're hardwood specialists, uh, and they do not just putting down the hardwoods, but they also finish and take care of any kind of flooring systems. Uh, he's third generation. I know I knew his father. Uh, me and his father had been friends for years and years. And Jacob is carrying on the family tradition in a high quality standard way. I highly, highly recommend this young man. And his phone number. 314-302-7222. That's 314-302-7222. That's, uh, Jacob's not only just helped me, but he's also helped my friends. And he's also, I think he's been in all my family members' house one time or another. And we still love him. So <laughs> that's got to say something. All right. right. So we're going to wrap this little segment up here, and we're going to talk about your completion expectations. So, what does that mean? How do you expect your property to look like when your subcontractors leave every day and at the end of the project? So, what do I mean by that? Well, every day. I particularly, and George, I think you said the same thing. You know, you like to see at least broom cleaned every night. Oh, you know? yeah. You know, and because when the guys, as you, as you were saying, the, the, the guys said, you, when, they, when they show up and the job's clean, they do better work. Don't you remember? Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and uh, but now, did we supply the room? <laughs> if necessary. <laughs> yeah. As long as it gets done. <laughs> yeah. Amen. That's it right there. Uh, so we want to make sure uh, that whatever your expectations are, yeah, bec- and I, I think, I myself, I love a clean job. I think that quality is better in a clean job. Uh, so you be the judge of what you feel better in, you know, especially drywall dust. Uh, what did you say? You don't sand, George? I don't sand. <laughs> I, I will drywall and tape and mud with the best of them, but I leave the sanding <laughs> up to the guys, the younger guys. Uh, and that sanding dust is really one of the horrible, nasty things that you don't want getting up in your ductwork and yes. getting into your furnace. You know? And if you got allergies, you don't want that, though. It does, I see, you know, you want somebody professional. So, And at the end of the project, so, or each project that your sub is doing. So, if, say, if it's a finished job, do you want it, uh, you know, and it's all wrapped up and they're done with the kitchen, do you want them kitchen countertops wiped out? Do you want to have them floors mopped and scrubbed, or are you just fine taking care of that yourself? Whatever your comfort level is, that's what you should, but make sure it's in writing, okay? Because if it's not in writing, then it, it, I guarantee you, not, them guys are going to be long gone, and you're never going to see them. And you're going to be upset when the wife comes home and she's got to do the cleaning, you know, so make sure that you have that all lined out. Also, lien waivers from every subcontractor and contractor and supply houses. Now, you're the GC general contractor you're going to get your lien waivers you know from the all your subs but now if you hire a general contractor hey make sure you get those lien waivers from them as i was talking with you know lat with matt nagel of by state law firm he talks about the different types of lien waivers folks you got to go check out that podcast that's going to be great uh so you want to find it and but not just from the mid labor you're going to want it from the supply houses that they also had been involved. Are you going to know every single one? Well, you might not, but you know, try to put the heat on them, make sure that they get what they can. Also, you want to make sure your final inspections are performed and they've been proven and proven that they have been and have passed. Now, of course, you got your own final inspections that you got you do to make sure that you know that all the little things are taken care of. But you, it's really important, really important that you get the municipals in, uh, inspections taken care of. You know because the county or the city or whatever they'll come back and slap. Uh, they'll put the hammer down on you. They could literally make you tear. You say you got electrical. And they didn't pass that electrical final. They can make you rip that drywall out. So uh, make sure you get that done because that's, I mean, absolutely important. Uh, you don't want a brand new kitchen 
and you got to tear it out because the general or because the municipal had or the county had not been passed the inspection. So you make sure you are doing a quality control inspection. Uh, you, the, they do the code safety inspections. Now, if you have any questions, honestly, you always could give us a call, Galloway Building Services. That's what we specialize in because a lot of folks really don't know what's supposed to be done. What is the end result supposed to look like? You know, and, be, and it, it's a lot. You know, a lot of things are happening. So you can always give us a call, and we'd love to help you in any way we possibly can. So these are some really neat ideas, uh, things to take care of. We are going to finish this segment up, and we're going to go to the very end here. I thank you so much for listening. I'm going to have my good friend, George Slaughter. Uh, he's on the Chamber of Com- Veterans, Chamber of Commerce, and as a veteran myself, you know, I, it's, I have a soft spot, So, and I'm on the board with him. Uh, he's our leader, and he's going to tell us why and how that you might be able to get involved. Well, folks, thank you, and we will see you on the other side. Welcome back, folks, to About the House. This is your humble host, Troy Galloway, owner of Galloway Building Services. We are your certified construction, consulting, and inspection company. And we want to give a shout out to our uh, to one of our sponsors, J and H Properties, real estate agent brokers. They are uh, folks. These folk, these people are just one of a kind. Just like this show, just like my company, and they will take good care of you from the beginning of the end. Write down this number. Three one four six zero two four eight three five. But let me wrap this up here. And George, tell us. I've been I've been I've been bragging about you all this way. Tell us about more about the Jet Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Well, thank you, Troy. Uh, well, the Veterans Chamber of Commerce is is an idea that was uh, grown out of the need for veterans to have somewhere to go and get the information. The leadership, the training, the camaraderie, and everything that every other business gets from a chamber of commerce. But we also wanted to focus on professional development. So we have put together a uh, curriculum uh, of different things where we meet together and we do brainstorming and we come up with ideas and best practices and try to help each other. Um, we also do things like uh we go out and we do service-oriented things for other veterans in the community. Um, it's really just a great place for veterans to look for that's a nine-to-five place where they can get all the resources, all the ideas, and connect with others in, in the community to to help grow their business, grow themselves, and to uh, also find jobs and do other things like that. So we will have job fairs, and we work with the corporations that – say they hire veterans to make the work environment better. So we go into corporations and we say, hey, what are you doing? You say you want to hire veterans, but what are you doing once they get here? So we want to, we try to make those, uh, those, the, the, uh, work life better for the veterans, whether they work at the post office or they own their own business, whether they are have, you know, a million dollar business or, you know, they punch a clock. We want to help veterans in business as across the board. Well, I- being a, a Marine Corps vet myself, I'm all about this. Now, how can veteran companies, construction veteran companies, all veteran companies, how sure. you give them your uh, how to get a hold of you? Okay, uh, you can go. You can call us uh, the, at six three six three nine nine four seven four seven. Uh, that's six three six three nine nine four seven four seven. That is the office phone. Um, and then we all. You can also go to www midwest veteranschamber.com that's the midwest veterans chamber.com um, where we have all of our schedules our calendars all of our upcoming events uh, we have a great big fundraiser coming up in october that i would love to share with people we're going to have a gala down at this new hotel downtown it's spectacular um and we're so we're also looking to 
uh, expand and uh, bring more veterans into uh, different aspects of the work environment here in St. Louis. Well, I'm going to have you come back before that and okay. we'll talk about that some more. Perfect. But let me ask you here real quick. Now, say we this is about the house. So I want somebody that's a construction cons- a, a, a carpenter or something as a veteran. If they call you, will you give send them in the right direction? Yeah, if they call us, we can have them come out. They can visit. We have coffees. We have networking events. We have happy hours. All these things are weekly and monthly occurrences, so there's always something to do. But if they call me, we'll definitely get them out there. We want those entrepreneurs, we want those workers to come out and get to know the chamber. Well, what about now if I say I need, I want to hire a veteran? And you, they're with you. Will you give uh, direct them to the? Absolutely. All right. I know you do. Absolutely. That's why I try. Absolutely. That. Yes. We we want to we we do th- we do things a little bit different, but we always are. That's our number one thing to make sure veterans succeed. Awesome. Oh, I'm really happy for what you're doing, sir. Uh, yeah. Give George Slaughter a call, Veterans Chamber of Commerce. Thank you, folks. We appreciate your time. Thank you for listening to our show. We will see you next week. Next week, I have Mike Caples of Farmers Insurance. Please jump in here and we'll listen to him. He's going to teach you a ton of stuff. Thank you.